Hey, I'm Jay from the Cub Scouts. Welcome back to another episode of me reacting to some scary animations. I have a lot of good ones for you all in today's episode. If you guys cool with that, you down with that. Everybody get ready and buckle up, because here we go! First video of today's episode comes from I Am Our Scary Tales. I will link everybody's channel that I react to in the description box below. This one's about a guy who finds a baddie online, but it turns out that that may not be the case when they meet in real life. So let's I remember do this. swiping right on her profile like it was yesterday. The bright screen of my phone illuminated her picture, casting a ghostly glow in my dark room. Her name was Bella, 23 years old. She had an enigmatic smile, one that seemed familiar, yet I couldn't place where I had seen it before. Bella was the epitome of ethereal beauty, a mesmerizing blend of grace and allure. Her eyes were the most striking feature, large and expressive. I think this guy needs to step back away from that phone real quick because he is a little too horny. Bro is more descriptive than a dictionary. This dude need to Shimmering calm down. Like pools of water He's about to get catfished real moon. bad too. So. They held a depth that seemed almost otherworldly, captivating anyone who dared meet her gaze. He won't her stop. long hair cascaded down her shoulders in luscious waves. When will the it color end? Of midnight. A stark contrast to her fair porcelain skin. It framed her face perfectly, highlighting her high cheekbones and the delicate curve of her jawline. Who's the bad guy here? The catfish person or this guy? He has serial killer vibes to him. Why is he so goddamn descriptive? Her thin lips were curled into a subtle enigmatic smile. Her figure slender and tall. Every aspect of her appearance was harmonious creating an aura of elegance and an This dude's describing her so hard that it's making me horny. <laughs> her bio was intriguing, Dude's but talking vague. so crazy, Just I need to put on some from a famous week. poet. She was really into true crime it's documentaries, it's preferred to Netflix and else. chill, and had a thing for good food. I felt drawn to her, somehow wondering if I have come across her before. After a few exchanges of witty banter and flirtatious remarks, we agreed to meet at a local bar. I had never been there before, but the name sounded oddly familiar. As I approached the bar, a strange sensation washed over me. The neon sign flickered, casting a surreal light on the pavement. It felt like I was walking into a scene from a movie that I had seen long ago. This is the most descriptive story that I have ever heard in my goddamn life. His face right there pretty much sums up how my brain is looking right now. My shit is looking east and west, up, down, left, right, ABA. Like, I have no idea how to process this because he's using big ass words that I've never heard before that this small brain can't comprehend. Like, tone it down a notch, buddy, okay? Just meet the girl, find out she's not who she is, and let's get on with the freaking story! I don't care how lit up the floor I is! Off. I don't care if you've seen the this shit before was in a dream! Lit, with old jazz music playing in the background and a familiar scent of bourbons and cigars lingered in the familiar air. Familiar this, familiar that. The atmosphere that. was intimate, almost too perfect. She was already there, seated at a corner table. Her Wait, I thought she was gonna be a catfish. She looked just like the person in the thing. Eyes reflecting the dim lights. As our eyes met, a shiver ran down my spine. Dude she said, was shiver even me timbers, more mate. captivating in it person. It really is her. Her presence both alluring and somehow unsettling. We hit it off immediately. Conversation flowed effortlessly, as if we had known each other for years. Her laughter was infectious, and her stories were fascinating yet they tinged with an eerie familiarity. She spoke of places she had visited, books she had read, and her love for old horror films, many of which were my favorites too. As the night progressed, she made casual remarks that sent jolts of recognition through me. She mentioned a book I was currently reading as if she knew it was on my nightstand. She referenced a horrific dream, exactly like the one I had a week ago. A chilling nightmare that I hadn't shared with anyone. Each coincidence was more bizarre than the last, blurring the lines between reality and something otherworldly. When I finally gathered the courage to ask her about these strange coincidences, she was quick to brush off my question with a smile. But then she dropped a tantalizing prospect. She invited me to her place. Come on, man. Don't fumble. By then, the drinks had clouded my judgment, and her sheer allure was irresistible. 
Well, if he did drink then, then he shouldn't be going back to her place. Because if you're intoxicated, you don't make the best decisions and everything gets blurred. So you might as well just go home, call an Uber, go home. Don't go back to her place, but we're about to see how this story ends. I agreed, but I could not have fully understood the gravity of my inebriated decision. Inebriated? The drive to her what does that even mean? The streets were empty and the night seemed unusually still as if the world was holding its breath. But when we arrived at her apartment, a chilling realization dawned upon that me. That face, man, stop I showing that goddamn angle. The layout, the particular painting on the wall, Ooh, the shaman rugs with weird <laughs> oh, sorry, <everybody>. symbols, <laughs> even the way the door creaked as it opened, it was all too familiar. She was quick to lead me to her bedroom and close the door behind her. She leaned in to kiss me on my cheek before excusing herself to fill us some wine. But as soon as I was there and saw a particular book on the top of her desk... As soon as you see a book on the nightstand that says Dark Magic of the Amazons and it has a symbol that looks like that, the only thing that you should do next is... I froze. Dark Magic of the Amazons. And in that moment, the deja vu, the dreams, the nightmares... They all made perfect sense. My memories flooded back in fragments, disjointed and hazy. I remembered swiping right on her profile, but that was not yesterday. It was the day before. The same bar, the same conversations, the same eerie coincidences. Okay. I had lived this very night the previous day as well. But there was something more, something sinister that I had forgotten. My heart raced as I recalled the chilling discovery from the previous night that- Bro, that was the most realistic heart animation that I've ever seen. Was that an actual heart? Like, whose heart was that? I'm not going back I had because this is one of those uh, compilations- I had seen her slip something into my drink and act overshadowed by the horrifying sight that followed. Okay, if you slip something into somebody's drink, you got to get shot in the parking lot. Hold on, everybody. I have to go back. That is actual heart. The chilling That's somebody's heart. That's somebody's son. That I had spent at that place. I had seen her slip something into my drink. Yeah, you got to die if you slip something into somebody's drink. by the horrifying sight That's that the lowest followed. of the low. In her kitchen, amidst the normal sea of utensils and herbs and Indian spices, lay a collection of knives like one I had never seen before. It made sense to me later that they were not meant for cooking, but for something more gruesome. And then I had come across the bones in her trash. Not the dog bone, bro. Scattered carelessly, not the generic which dog she had bone nonchalantly stop. explained were for her dog. Whatever she had spilled into the drink last night was slow to take effect, because in that moment, I recalled saying to myself, there's no dog in this apartment. <laughs> Panic had just surged you. through me as the truth <laughs> dawned. She wasn't just, just a strange you, big dog. woman from Tinder. She was dangerous. I had grabbed a knife from her kitchen, and naturally, when uh -oh, she came knife at me battle. later with a meat Let's cleaver, get to it. she was surprised to find me stabbing her heart. I had acted in self-defense. Before I could even think what I had done, I was quick to dump her body in the bathtub. What? Bro, self-defense and then you put on OJ gloves and you dispose of her body? Which I'm gonna assume is a bathtub full of acid because I'm sure you've done this before. What is happening right now? Dude claims self-defense, stabbed her perfectly in the heart, put on some gloves, and now he's disposing of the body? Yeah, you're innocent, mister. I had fled, the horror of that night haunting me. But as these memories resurfaced, reality twisted into a nightmare. If she was dead, then who was the woman standing before me with two wine glasses? Wait. I excused I'm... myself to the bathroom, hoping to make sense of the chaos. What? The bathroom was exactly Ooh. as I remembered from the previous Whose night. Whose bra is that? Cold, sterile, and immaculate. That's not my bra. Except for the overbearing stench. And then there she was, in the bathtub, lifeless, just as I had left her body. Bro, who the, the fuck room is that? spun around me, my mind struggling Why is this guy to looking comprehend the impossible. The time. If she was dead, who was the girl outside? Returning to the living room, Bro, I, I was met chills. with the most terrifying sight of my life. The woman, the one that I had been with all night, stood there. But she was different. Her Ooh. eyes were pitch black, 
voids of darkness that seemed to consume the light around her. You know her she stinks too. Was unnaturally pale. She and just the has that look in her chest. The one that I had inflicted was a grotesque two stab wounds to her death. You in sure it was self-defense? The horrific truth became clear. I had been on a date with a ghost, the vengeful spirit of the cannibalistic woman I had murdered the previous night. Oh, no! She had orchestrated this nightmarish repeat of our last encounter, a macabre replay leading to her ultimate revenge. As she lunged at me, her teeth transformed into scissor-like blades, a twisted smile on her ghostly face. I stumbled backward, terror gripping my heart. The world around me faded into darkness soon as fountains of blood gushed through my neck, and as life started escaping my body, I felt her cold, purple lips kissing my cheek for one last time. How are you telling this story, though? Holy crap. Yo, that actually gave me the chills. I thought it was going to be something stupid, but it turns out dude went on a date with a ghost. Next story of today's episode is called Occupied. It is from Liam Funk. I will leave the link to their channel in the description box below. But anyway, let me shut my dumbass mouth and let's get to it. Wow. The animation is smooth like butter. On some Pixar type shit. Oh yeah, gotta crack the lower back before you let one loose. He's taking a number three for sure. That shit's gonna be wetter than a slip and slide. Oh no, you're locking up for the night. I got you. Okay. That's cute. Yeah, the animation in here is nice. You know when you give that face where you're like... Okay. Yeah, oh yeah, all right. Those midnight dooskies hit different. If I stopped at a random rest stop like that, and there was no car in sight. It was pitch black besides maybe a couple lights from the bathroom lights and then maybe the headlights from my car. And I saw that it was occupied and I heard somebody on the other side. I think I would die right there on the spot. Like I would just fall back like that Looney Tune style and just die. I think I would just freak out if I saw somebody in a stall in the middle of buttfuck nowhere. Don't you dare. A simple I'm busy would have sufficed. And I never say sufficed. At least pull your pepper spray out. I know you don't have a gun. <laughs> oh, crap. This dude's a braver man than me. I would have just left. Yeah, this dude needs the raise of all raises after this. I wouldn't give a shit. If I heard that noise after knocking one time, just one finger tap. Dude, don't, don't. Hmm. Oh. That reminds me of that Spongebob episode when the guy looks in the toilet and he's like, oh, that's real nice. Ew.
Bro, just go. <laughs> Thank you! Finally! Somebody with a brain in a scary animation or movie. As soon as you see that, even if it's not finished bubbling up, the next thing you would have heard is me doing the keys in the ignition like... Next video of today's episode isn't an animation, but it did look interesting. It's called Don't Look at Your Phone. It's from ACM Official. And why can't we look at our phone? I'll look at my phone as long as I damn well please, and you're not going to do anything about it because your mom is a little bitch. Not you. Not her. I'm just, I'm just saying, like, in general, like, somebody's a bitch. You know what? Maybe I'm a bitch. Yeah, you know what? Let's, let's go with that. I'm the bitch here. But I'm gonna look at my phone, and nobody's gonna do anything about it. Let me see what's funny. I wanna see what's funny. I wanna laugh. Ooh. Hi, babe. I was gonna say, who the heck? Josh is here. I'm leaving. Babe. 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 Hello. Are you okay? Uh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Well, I'm leaving. Have a safe trip. Remember, we're gonna be totally off-grid. You're gonna be able to survive without me for two weeks? I'll try. Love you. Love you too. You know this guy thinks that he's so cool. Just by the way he's talking, just by the way he's moving. You take care now. <laughs> Love you, babe. So the phone kind of hypnotizes her? Look at me. Yeah. If the phone whispers, look at me, just get a Samsung or something. Throw the iPhone away. She's looking, damn. That possessed phone is a little too clingy. Convenient charger right there. Damn, so if her phone was charging the whole time, she would have been looking at that thing forever. Look at me. Look at me. Please look at me. I want attention. I'm so lonely. Oh, yes, thank you for looking at me. Oh, do you like how good I look? Do you love me? That's the POV of me when the doctor saw me being born. Smiling like that. Oh yeah, see? I was right. The phone's charging so it doesn't stop. It never ends. Look at me. How does the hair get more crazy? If both hands are on the phone, how does the hair get more crazy? It just doesn't naturally get more crazy. Wait, 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 wait. This is the most unbelievable thing about this whole thing, okay? Dude said he's gonna spend a few weeks off grid, comes back, hair still fresh as fuck. As a person who gets a haircut every few weeks, what are we doing here? It's not that fresh. It's never that fresh if you just came back. You know what? Maybe he just got back, went straight to the barber before he saw his partner. So you know what? Let me shut my whole ass up. Maybe that's what happened. If she is a skeleton or something, I'm done. I'm ending the video not even saying anything. The flies, though? Come on, the flies? <laughs> I mean, yo, I was expecting her to be a full skeleton, like a science class skeleton. You know, the ones that are just in the corner, just chilling. If she was a science class skeleton, 
I would have just ended this shit, not even say any more words. Last video of today's episode is called Mama Agnes. It comes from Alexander the Titan. It's about a doppelganger. So let's see how it goes. <laughs> That's already a red flag. Can't talk right now. Uh oh. Uh uh oh. I mean, we already know where this is going, right? Mama never left the house. Yeah, for real. Crack open a window. Spray some Febreze. Maybe turn on a fan. I don't know. Something. Oh. Mom? Hey, sweetie. You're home early. I thought you weren't supposed to be back till next week. Oh? I think we can all agree that if your mom is standing there like that, something's wrong. Because moms do not act like that in front of their kids. They do not act all creepy and sinister. They're kind of just like, what are you doing? Trying to open that window, huh? Close it. You're letting all the good air out. Something like that. You know, moms are always roasting. Especially my mom. My mom okay? loves to talk shit to me. She loves to tell me yes. things all the time. Everything is fine. Kind of scared me, not gonna lie. The fuck? Wait, I don't understand though. She said that something in the house smells rotten. I thought that the mom was going to be dead and the doppelganger completely took over her body and not the personality because obviously when the real mom answered the phone, she was just kind of like a regular mom. But obviously there was something up with the person standing in the doorway. Anybody could have seen that. The neighbor four houses down could have seen this shit coming. But what was the thing that was smelling rotten in the house? But anyway, everybody, that's going to do it for this episode of me reacting to these scary animations. If you all enjoy this and want more in the future, make sure you give this video one big fat like. And tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is that dude.